Hey everybody, Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel. And hey, I've got a drone today that uh, I've been pretty excited to show you. It's the MJX Bug 16. Here's the case. They always send it to you in a nice looking case here. And uh, I don't know if you can actually see by the size here, but this is a big drone. That's my hand over the drone. Uh, you know, you think of it as uh, a Bugs drone as a smaller drone, and it's not. It's a pretty big one. And there he goes with the, uh, with the tractor behind us. We're filming in a public park, so that's cool. Hey, I'm going to show you how that, uh, how that tractor works now. They're doing some uh, aerating out at the park today, so it looks like we're going to be able to give you uh, uh, kind of a look at it. That's one of the things, when you're making these videos out at a public park, uh, this is the kind of thing you expect, so it's kind of cool. Let's see if we can move the camera around here so you can uh, see how that aerator works. And you guys thought this was just a drone channel. Pretty slick setup. Okay, back to the uh, MJX Bug 16. So uh, this was sent to me uh, by uh, MJX RC and uh, I appreciate it. So here's the drone uh, fully unfolded. And like I said, it's a big guy and uh, these front arms fold down. Uh, but it, what's interesting is it folds similar to a parrot anafi. And let me show you that. So these front arms uh, simply, they all just fold out, right? So the rear arms, then the front arms. But uh, I'm going to say that this drone is twice as big as a parrot anafi and twice as heavy, too. This is not a, a lightweight drone. Uh, and uh, I as you can see, I haven't even taken all the stickers and everything off of it yet. So we're going to do that, obviously, pre-flight. But let's take a look at the, at the gimbal so you can see it. Pull the sticker off the bottom here. So the gimbal cover just basically slides on, but it hooks at the front, the back, and the sides. So you kind of have to squeeze in and squeeze a few different directions to get it off. So, uh, but it's good. That protects the gimbal. So as you can see, I haven't even taken the, uh, the uh, cover off the lens yet, but we'll, we'll do that, the little piece of plastic that's on there. But it is a three-axis gimbal. It, uh, it will work in the roll axis, the uh, pitch axis, and the yaw axis. So uh, I'm anxious to see how that works. Uh, it, it does uh, use an SD card. There's the SD card slot right there. Uh, and they're saying FAT32 is what it says in the instructions. So that kind of leads me to believe that you're going to want to use a 32 gigabyte card. Now because it's 4K, I would use a U3 rated card at the very least class 10, but I would suggest a U3 rated card. And if you use like a 64 gigabyte or something, you're going to want to partition it and then uh, uh, format to FAT32. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, while we're on that subject, let me just read you some of the uh, specifications for this guy. I made some notes so that I could uh, get it right here. So this is the Bug 16 Pro, and they're saying it weighs 612 grams. So again, that's not a lightweight drone. That's, that's pretty good size. Uh, it does, of course, say that it's got uh, GPS. It doesn't say here whether it's uh, GLONASS or just GPS and maybe Baidu, I, I don't know, uh, but it is for sure a GPS drone. Uh, they're saying a transmission distance of 600 meters, it's not going to be that. I can just tell you that right off the bat. If we get a couple hundred meters in this class of drone, I think that's good. And I'll show you in a little bit, the controller just uses two AA batteries. That's going to kind of tell you that it's not going to be a drone with, with a huge range on it. Uh, but it does uh, require 5G Wi-Fi, so you need to make sure your phone has that. It will transmit back to your phone uh, FPV and 720p. Uh, so that should give you a pretty good clear FPV picture back to your phone. Uh, but it is a 4K uh, EIS. EIS stands for Electronic Image Stabilization. 
Photo size is 4K, 3840 by 2160, and video re resolution is the same, 3840 by 2860, 4K video. It says it has a, a, a 50 megabit transmission rate, which that's pretty good for a drone in this class. Again, 32, FAT32 uh, file system, so that you're going to want to format that video card to FAT32. Uh, frame rate uh, in uh, 4K is 30 frames per second. If you're shooting in 1080p, it will go up to 60 frames per second. A lot of people don't need any more than 1080p, and so then you could shoot in 60 frames per second. It uses the H.264 codec. It's saying here, they're asking for a class 10 or above card, and they're saying uh, it will support up to a 128 gigabyte card. Now, to me, that means either you're gonna have to partition that card to format to FAT32, or maybe it will accept XFAT format, but you just are gonna have to try that to see, I think. Uh, battery is a, a 3200 milliamp battery, LiPo battery. You know, I'm looking, I printed the specifications out of the uh, manual and I'm looking and I am not seeing anywhere that it says how long flight time is, but I'm kind of thinking, I read on the box, I think it said 25 minutes. Don't quote me on that, but honestly, if you get uh, 15 to 18 minutes out of a battery, uh, that's going to be pretty good and I think we'd be satisfied with that. They will say a maximum speed of uh, 40 kilometers an hour, so what? that's roughly 30 miles an hour or so, so that's pretty good, that's pretty quick. Uh, so the main thing is, what are we looking for in this drone? We're looking for a drone that will give us good stabilized video footage. That in fact is why you buy a camera drone. Uh, the, Big, the other big selling point for this drone is that it is a bargain drone, right? It, it, I saw it advertised on Banggood for $249.99, something like that. Let's just say $250. Bucks. Hopefully they come out with some discount codes. If, if they could get this thing closer to $200, bucks, it really would be a steal. If you're somebody that's just trying to decide if you want to start out and, and fly a, a GPS stabilized camera drone, I'm saying that this one might be a pretty good place to start. Now we're not going to know that till we get it up in the air here and check out that video for ourselves. So some of the other features of the Bug 16 Pro is that it does have uh, downward facing sensors to give you that optical flow right there. Uh, I'm assuming one of those is a camera and the others are time of flight sensors and then also there is an LED light here for, uh, I guess that would be for lighting up the ground if you were filming inside and in low light situations, that then helps the, uh, the optical flow sensor see what it's doing. Okay, let's take a quick look at the RC uh, for the Bugs 16 Pro. It's got a couple of handles on the bottom here, which is kind of handy. And then, unfortunately, it just uses AA batteries. So two AA batteries are what power the transmitter. That tells you that you're going to have, you know, limited range. That's not a lot of power for the transmitter. There's some better news, though, with regard to the antennas. Let me turn that around, and hopefully you can see there is actually a wire going up into this one, so it is a working antenna, and that will help with uh, uh, range. Yeah, you pull this all the way out, and then move it up, and, uh, and your phone fits in there. So I'm going to suggest when you have a larger phone like me, you're going to point the antenna down, and it fits in there, but I'm going to tell you, take your case off, because I don't know if you can see on the side here, that's kind of tenuous the way it holds it in there. A smaller phone would probably work better. This is uh, uh, an iPhone Max, so it's a little bit bigger phone. Okay, I took my phone off so I could show you the controls on the back here. So this is your gimbal tilt, uh, it would be on the right hand side. Uh, and then uh, this is the speed control, plus it also will turn on the uh, the light on the bottom of the drone. And I'm not sure if that's a which one's a short press and which one's a long press, but uh, we'll figure that out. And this drone right here is your takeoff and landing button. There's a wheel here, but it's locked. It doesn't do anything. Uh, then on the side of the drone, you can put it in Addy mode if you want, down for no GPS. 
I would suggest always leaving it on in GPS. That's the way I fly. Uh, and then on the front of the drone, uh, short press uh, right here on the left side to take a picture. Uh, this is return to home uh, on the uh, other side. Uh, hold that button down and it'll put the drone into return to home. This is the on off switch for the RC and this button is to unlock the motors and then of course you got the gimbal sticks. Let's turn it on here real quick. I don't know if you'll be able to see the screen but it's got pretty good telemetry uh, on the screen there so we'll get it fired up uh, here and we'll let you take a look at that. Here's a look at the drone all uh, folded out in all of its glory and you know what? Uh, I say we quit messing around. Let's get this bird in the air. Okay, let's get this guy fired up. The first thing you do is uh, turn on the RC and you want to put the RC in pairing mode. So you hold down the lock button and turn it on and that puts the drone in pairing mode and you can see the, the I don't know, you can't see it on the telemetry there or not, but those uh, on the sides, there's uh, movement up and down on those bars. And now let's turn on the drone. And so the drone gave us a, or the, excuse me, the RC gave us a beep there. And then you can see those little on the telemetry. I don't know if you guys can see it, but on, on the side there, uh, they stopped moving. The bars stopped moving. And I can see uh, the picture of the drone. Its battery is full. The picture of the RC, its battery is full. So we know we're connected. So uh, the next thing that we have to do is do uh, some calibrations. So the drone is already in uh, compass calibration mode. Uh, so we're going to do three turns uh, counterclockwise uh, horizontally and three turns vertically. And then vertical. And we have solid lights on the drone and so we know we're calibrated. Now the next thing, I started a screen recording here, the next thing I need to do is uh, make sure we're connected to the drone and Wi-Fi. So I'm going into Wi-Fi here, maybe. So the next thing you're going to want to do is make sure the drone is uh, connected to your phone via Wi-Fi. So we're going to go into settings and go into Wi-Fi. And I am looking for Drone 4G, I'm going to say that's it, so uh, I'm clicking on Drone 4G. Hopefully there's not somebody else out here with a Wi-Fi drone, and it's connected, so we should be good. The app for this drone is the MRC Pro app, so let's turn that on now. And that takes us to the, start, to the beginning screen, and we're in English. We're going to click Start, and uh, we are... It's got in, uh, beginner's instructions there. We've seen those already. So yeah, let's look at that. We're all hooked up. We've got uh, FPV view. So uh, let's take a look in uh, settings here, uh, in camera settings, and see. Yeah, so we're set up in 4K, 30 frames per second already, and electronics image stabilization is on. Uh, I've got everything uh, in auto here. I'm going to leave it all in auto. Uh, and, uh, and, and we'll call that good. Uh, and then this next one is cash. So, and then you can format your, your card. I'm going to leave that alone. My card is already formatted. Let's take a look and click on that gear icon on the top there. And uh, flight altitude, we need to, yeah, we're going to have to adjust that up to, uh, we want to be able to get our full, I'm going to set it at a little under that, 116 meters. That way you know you're underneath the, uh, the maximum flight distance. We're going to move that all the way up to max. And according to this, uh, that's 200 meters. So it's not going to let you go more than 200 meters. Orbit, we can set that. We're going to try that orbit. So let's set that guy, maybe. We moved that up to 30, that's plenty. That's, we don't want to go that much. Let's put it at 20. And uh, return to home altitude set at 15. I'm gonna set it way higher than that. In fact, we'll, let's move it up to like 40 meters. Uh, and, oh, I can see you can even do uh, a calibration here on this page if you want, so that's good to know. If you missed the calibration before you fired up the app, you can do it here too. Uh, this, I'm sure, is some kind of gimbal adjustment, but that's all in Chinese, so I'm got, not going to touch it. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is flight log from some other flights that I've done with uh, 
some other uh, drones. So, yeah, I think we're good to go there. Uh, let's see, update. I'm going to click on that. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so what that was was saving the settings that we just made, and that's kind of what I thought that meant. And I see we're in high speed mode. Let's see if we can uh, change that on the controller here. And that might have just turned on the light. Let me hold that down. Yeah, it's still showing in high speed mode, so... Oh no, yeah, that's slow. that put it in low speed mode. Okay, good, I want to start off in low speed. So I don't see any reason why we can't take off. I'm gonna start recording now. So I just clicked on the, uh, I clicked on the app to start recording. Let me get out of the way so you can see it take off. I'm gonna tilt the, the uh, GoPro down a little bit so you get a better look at it. And uh, now, normally you arm the motors here, but I'm gonna try just the takeoff button on the app and see what happens. Yeah, no, so you do, you gotta arm the motors first. So we're gonna click take off uh, right here on the, uh, on the controller, this button unlock, excuse me, and that'll start up the motors. And we got nothing. One more time. And I don't know why that's not unlocking the motors. There we go. It just took another shot, just a short press did it. So then we're going to hit takeoff on the app and we swipe. And there, that's not looking too bad. It's holding about a meter uh, off the ground, maybe a little bit more. It's moving around a little bit. We got some wind today. I forgot to pull up UAV forecast. It's sinking a little bit there. I think you guys can see that on camera. I'm gonna manually, it's about, I don't know, pretty low to the ground here, a couple feet off the ground. I'm gonna bring it up manually and we're gonna yaw it around. And again, we're in, in uh, what they call tripod mode. And uh, let's bring it over here. And boy, I'll tell you what, the, uh, the controls in this low mode are, are pretty slow, but that's okay. And that little green thing you see on the front of the gimbal is just an inspection sticker. I didn't take that off. Uh, but it looks pretty good on FPV. I mean, the drone is moving around a little bit, I will say that. Uh, I think we probably should put it in high speed mode, because I'm telling you, this low speed is, is pretty, uh, pretty low. So I'm holding the button down. Yeah, and then that put it in high speed mode. You can see that on the app. So, uh, so let's bring it in just a little bit. Yeah, it's much more responsive in high speed. So I think unless you want to go really slow, high speed is what you're going to want to be in. Let's, uh, let's see if we can rock it back and forth. There, and you can see that gimbal in action. And uh, then let's move it back a little bit. And you can see the gimbal dip. Move it forward, you can see the gimbal uh, pick up a little. So, I mean, it seems to be pretty stable in flight. Let me uh, see if I can uh, drop the gimbal down. There we go, that was pretty smooth. So let's do our, uh, let's do our usual droney here, and, uh, and we'll go back a little ways, and we'll test return to home, make sure it knows where its home is. So reverse and up now. And that was a pretty quick up there. And boy, I'll tell you what, I, I did a lot of cross coupling on that, uh, on that one, kind of getting used to the controls. Fairly sensitive on that, on that yaw control. So, you know, it's just something you'll have to get used to. But uh, let, me, uh, let me pick up the camera here real quick. And yeah, TX no signal and it said it was going to go into return there. And we're out 64 meters and it already had a signal problem. So. That's, uh, that's probably not a great sign. And I am seeing, you know, looks to me, let me drop the camera just a little, well, it's pretty sensitive there. I was trying to get to that rule of thirds. We'll go up a little higher. Okay, so, I, I mean, if I'm looking at the horizon, it might be just a little bit tilted there. It's not horrible though. I've seen, I've seen much worse. So I'm gonna head the drone out, and boy, that yaw is quick. Yeah, pretty sensitive. 
Uh, I don't know how far I dare take this guy because like I said at 62 meters we already had, man this yaws, yeah and we're already getting uh, control, or we already got a, a loss of signal so let's let's move out a little bit and uh, boy it, it this thing goes pretty fast. Yeah I mean we were up to uh, uh, over 11 meters per second there so that's about I don't know, 24 miles an hour or so, so that's pretty quick. So let's turn it around again. I'm, I'm, I really don't want to get it too far away from us. Hey, I want, I'll let me show you, take a look at that. Gosh darn it, guys, this, this yaw is, st I'm struggling with control. And yeah, moving the drone around, we kind of lost uh, signal there. But I was just going to show you, they're doing some work on the, uh, on the basketball courts there. I don't know what they're doing, but they're definitely doing some work. So let's go ahead and hit return to home ourselves. And we're, like I said, we're about, we're out about a little over 100 meters and we're intermittently losing uh, signal with the drone. So let's hit return to home. And yeah, so it's going up to its return to home height. I'm trying to remember what I set that at. Was it 30 or 40 meters? I don't remember. Must have been 40 meters. And let's see, it's rising. I'm watching the drone rise. Yeah, we set it at about 40 meters and it's, it does not change its orientation and it's just moving sideways back to us. That's okay, it's coming back and that's the main thing. And uh, let's just see where that drone is coming down at here. You know, when you're watching it come down, it's always a little scary because uh, you wonder how far off it is. Let's uh, see if we can drop that gimbal. Yeah, we can. I think I can control that gimbal on the, well, sort of. I was trying to control the gimbal on the, on the screen there, but there you can see us there. And this gimbal will only look down 70 degrees. It won't look 90 degrees down. Let's pick it back up as we come down. And I'm just going to go ahead and let it land, and you guys are going to see it on screen here. I mean, it's a few feet off of the uh, uh, of the uh, of the uh, landing pad there. I mean, I'm going to say that's three or four feet off, so that's uh, well within what you would expect. Okay, let's go ahead and take off again, and uh, just to take this guy out, and just let's just fly it around a little. So again, we're going to unlock the, the uh, props by pressing this, unlock, this lock button on the controller. And they fired right up. And then we're going to hit uh, take off on the app, slide it, and then there it goes. Let's just, uh, let's just head straight out. And I just headed straight forward to see just how stable this guy would be with the ground. And it's, it's holding its height just fine. Let's, uh, let's move it around. Let's just fly it around here a little bit. And I'm at, I'm at full throttle with the drone. And let me tell you, this guy's a, this guy's a flyer. And it, it, it tilts right forward. So, uh, so I'll, quit, uh, I'll quit making you dizzy here and, uh, and let's go, let's grab some altitude. I just wanted to see how well it would stay uh, above the uh, above the ground, and I'm really anxious to look at the uh, at the video off the SD card on this guy. It, it looks pretty good on the on the screen here. I notice I'm not getting a, a map down below, so I don't know if I needed to cache a map first. I mean, I'm connected via cell, so I'm not sure. Let's click on that map real quick just to see. And yeah, I don't know, maybe. No, we got a map here, so that's good. Okay, uh, so let's go back to, uh, it was just zoomed in pretty quick. So let's go back, let's see how far if we can get out here to the corner of the park. And remember, we were out about a uh, hundred, I think a uh, hundred and sixty meters, a hundred, maybe a little over a hundred meters and we were losing signal. Let's, uh, let's grab some altitude here, because altitude helps you uh, get signal. We can go up about 40 meters, no problem. And yeah, out here on the corner, and this is a look that you guys have seen before. We're down to about three quarters battery on the, uh, on the drone. So I am gonna stop recording now, and we're gonna see if we can take a picture. 
So I'm doing that on the app. I'm going to stop recording and it wants to access. So we're going to say yes. And we lost signal. Yeah, we're losing signal a little bit. So I'm going to take a picture here real quick. And it says photo taken successfully. Let me, I'm going to yaw the other way just a tad. And it's still taking controls. Oh man, I'm telling you, this yaw is so sensitive. It's really hard. And there's just a little bit of lag in the controls here that makes it tough. But, uh, but let's go ahead and take another picture here real quick. And the drone is, it's kind of moving around. It's kind of yawing around on its own. Yeah, and it's saying no signal. Well, yeah, so is it returning? Yeah, the drone is coming back. That's what was going on there. It lost signal enough that the drone's coming back. So I started recording again. And like I said, it holds that vector. So let's see if we can cancel that. Yeah, so it, that took it out of it. So as soon as I, I hit uh, return to home on the controller and that canceled it, so that's good to know. And there I'm definitely seeing a little bit of a cricket horizon. Uh, you know, that's, it's, it's not horrible, but, it, but that's not great. And this, this price range of a drone, I mean, I don't know if you can expect much more than that. And uh, yeah, not connected it says, and it's not that far away from us. I'm hoping to see that green come back at the top and it's not. I'm holding the controller up. You know, it's weird. It's taking, I'm watching the drone and it's taking controls. It's just that I don't have FPV. That's interesting. So that makes it tough uh, to can't see. So I'm, I'm disappointed in that. I'll be honest with you. Uh, if, if you're this close to the drone and you're losing FPV, that's a problem. Okay, let's bring it down and I'm going to bring it back to us and see if we can regain uh, FPV. And I'm just going in reverse with the drone. So this is definitely a drone that uh, you absolutely are not going to want to lose sight of. And I am, I, I am full down on the stick. Yeah, now it's coming down. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're really close and we, uh, we've lost all uh, FPV connection. There, we got it back. Look at that. Okay. So, I mean, we were less than, I'm going to say, 20 meters away from the drone to get that back. Uh, so that's disappointing. So I guess that's what I'm going to tell you is that is going to be the weak point of this drone is that uh, is, is you're just not going to get a lot of range. Now, I am in an urban environment here. We're, I'm moving back out where I was because I wanted to get up here and take some pictures. Uh, you guys have seen me take pictures out here before. And you know we've got a good connection now. It's kind of weird that we lost that FPV and we're out even further now. We're out about 150 meters. So I, I'm going to stop recording again and I'm going to take a picture. And I see the drone drifts a little bit, even when you're trying to hover. Let's take one more picture. Okay, and we're going to start recording again. And uh, let me turn it around. How much battery have we got here? We're still, according to the controller and the app, about three quarters battery. So I'm yawing it around. I'm kind of getting used to the yaw a little bit. Let's, let's drop that gimbal just a tad. Maybe I was going there. Oh boy. Yeah, there's a tad, isn't it? Yeah, so there again, uh, you know, we lost FPV. So as you turn the drone, it changes the orientation of the antennas. And I lost FPV, so that's not good. So the drone is just uh, hovering there. Let me see. I can see the drone, so I think I can fly it back towards us. Yeah. Okay, I've got it coming back to us here, and we'll see if we can get FPV back. That's a problem. I, uh, I've always, uh, like I said, I, I spend a lot of time uh, bragging about MJX, uh, but this is not, uh, you know, and again, we're in an urban environment here, but you should be able to do better than that. Yeah, okay, so we got it back, and uh, so we can go back out. Let's uh, 
pick that gimbal up just a tad. Whoop, that's the wrong way. I always get confused on the gimbal wheel on this guy. Trying to get to that rule of thirds. And again, we're seeing a little bit of a crooked horizon there. But let's, uh, let's move it sideways. And I wanted to get you a look at that, uh, at the, uh, uh, what they're doing over there. Wow, holy cow. Yeah, it's just that yaw control and you got just enough uh, lag in FPV that it, it's, it's tough. But I wanted to kind of get you a look at what these guys are doing over here. And you know, we're getting pretty good flight time. I mean, you, you know, if you look at the, uh, at, at least the battery meter, and again, the drone drifts a little bit, even we're, we're in full hover. I'm completely off the sticks and you're seeing the drone drift just a little. Okay, I'm trying to yaw to the left. And you know, I don't know if it's lag in FPV or what. Now here it comes. And there we go. So I'm standing under that tree over there, and you see the guy uh, with the uh, air rating machine. Let's bring this thing back to us. In fact, we're going to stay out of that guy's way. We are going to make sure he is all the way by us, so it won't hurt us to fly it around here a little. I'm going to grab some more altitude. And yaw around, and let's uh, let's see if we can look down again and see where our tractor is at here. There he is. So I'm going to see if I can kind of uh, move around. I'm trying. Boy, yeah, yeah. I was trying. Yeah, and you know, I lost. Uh, I lost FPV. So that is a classic situation. What I was trying to do was I was trying to do an arch around that tractor and get you a look at him, but we had so much lag in FPV that the drone moved around before I could even see it. So it just makes it impossible to get a shot when that happens. So that's something you're going to have to bear in mind this time. And, and again, I'm, I'm really disappointed. I'll be honest with you. I, uh, I have spent a lot of time uh, talking about how much I like MGX drones, and there again, we just lost signal, and the drone is 44 meters away from us, and it came back, so, yeah, let's, uh, let's turn it around here, yeah, let me uh, see if I can yeah, you know, trying to, there again, that lag again, I'm trying to control the gimbal, and there's enough lag that you just, you don't even know, you just don't know where the gimbal is at. Yeah, I don't know, guys. I wish I could, I wish I could tell you here. I'm, I'm holding, there we go. And then all of a sudden it'll take it. Yeah, and then see it just jumped ahead there. So it's just a guessing game. Yeah. I don't know. I'm I'm sorry about that. I uh, I had hoped for better. I mean the drone. I, I I I it's 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 definitely pretty powerful. I mean how fast are we going here? Almost 11 meters per second. A little over. That's pretty quick. So let's stop right there and let's see if we can turn around again. We're out uh, almost 150, 146 meters. Let's see if we can turn around and. As the antenna changes, yeah, we lose signal. Yeah, now we got it back. Okay, so that's good. Let me see if I can drop the camera. And we did, okay. And again, it was kind of a guessing game, but we did it. And then again, uh, yeah, so it just dropped some more even after I let go. And we lost some signal again. Yeah, you know, that gimbal has moved about three different times since I, uh, since I uh, last adjusted the wheel. So that tells you, man, I mean, it, I, it's just, 
I just got to be honest with you, it's just impossible to, uh, it's impossible to fly like this. You can't, this, uh, looking straight at the camera now, this is extremely disappointing to me that, that we don't have better FPV control with this drone because, you know, you see me trying to fly it and I'm not very far away and if you can't get a good reliable picture of what you're looking at, it's just impossible. So there I just tried to move the gimbal up and you can see me, I'll hold the the, get the button and supposedly, yeah, oh, there we go. That yeah, was going the wrong way, but you saw how long it took, how much lag there was. So let's see if we can pick it up. And you saw me touch it and you saw the thing finally move. One more time, scroll, and then we finally see some movement. Yeah, I mean that just makes it, it just makes it almost impossible to, uh, to fly the drone. You're just not going to get a shot, and if, if you know, the, I mean, you can see my FPV jerking around there. So, uh, you know, uh, we still, and and I'm not sure if I trust the battery meter here. Uh, we've been flying for uh, uh, and recording, although, <laughs> uh, yeah, now it's kind of catching up. I was looking at even. The recording time on the screen seemed like it kind of stuck there. And it still says we got three quarters of a battery. Uh, now it went down to half. And okay, when this drone gets to half battery, it restricts you to uh, uh, 100 meters distance and 30 meters high, which we're already closer than that. So uh, anyway, let's, uh, let's bring it down here a little bit. And it even says so on the screen there. Let me see if I can drop the camera. And again, it's just so hard. I'm gonna back it off here just a little. And there you can see me standing down there. Yeah, and see I was trying, I was trying to do an arch around. Okay, I'm going to see if I put it in to tripod mode if that helps. So, holding down. And I think we got a beep there, so I think that put us in tripod mode. I'm going to go full reverse and see. Yeah, and it did. That really slowed down our speed. So I'm looking, I'm looking up at the drone and I'm going to see if I can do uh, a circle, manual circle with it. And I, and I kind of can, but, uh, but the FPV is still so jerky that there's no way that if you were looking at a point of interest that that would work. And, you know, I'm using uh, an iPhone 11 Pro Max, so, you know, this, dr this uh, phone is plenty powerful enough that we shouldn't have a problem. Uh, okay, uh, let's, uh, let's just test that uh, range. It says it shouldn't go out more than 100 meters, so I'm gonna back it up here. And boy, is it slow. It's moving so slow. Yeah, and, and that gimbal wheel always confuses me when I think I'm going up, I'm going down. One thing about it, when you're in slow mode, you got time to make those adjustments. So we are out uh, 70 meters, and it should stop at 100 meters. And I have eyes on the drone. So I'm not worried about losing signal. I can see right where it's at. And yeah, it stopped. And look at that, it turned around. Yeah, well, it didn't turn around. I saw it do something, but it definitely stopped there. So I am full stick forward. Well, it won't, it won't go any further than that. So let's go backwards. Yeah, and it'll come back to us. 
So 88 meters, it says it'll go 100 meters, and we're up 31 meters high right now. Uh, and it's coming back. Let's, let's see if we can go up. I'm throttling up. Yeah, and it won't go any higher than that. So that definitely uh, slows you down. Okay, we're gonna, it's just too slow in that mode. So I'm gonna go back into high speed mode and yawn around here. And yeah, I can tell it's in high speed mode again. And let's bring it down and bring it on in here. And we'll just try uh, one more time uh, uh, another return to home here in a second. Let's just let's just fly it in here real quick, so you guys can see how quick it is, and it is quick. Boy, I'll tell you, it doesn't put the brakes on very fast though. So if you're getting near an object, uh, I'm just fair warning. And now it's dropping, so I don't know if yeah, no, maybe that was just it. Uh, naturally dropping there. So I'm going to bring it down. It's easier for me to bring the drone down uh, than it is to uh, than it is to uh, try and drop the gimbal. Uh, it does not appear to be connected to the internet. Use cellular data. Yeah, of course. Uh, okay, so uh, let's go full reverse here. So full reverse and I'm watching the drone to make sure. Yeah, and that, you know, the optical flow is working. It's staying, it's staying above the ground, and I'm kicking it up there. And we're out over 100 meters, and it should be bringing it back. So let's go ahead and let's click Return to Home. So I clicked Return to Home, and is it ascending? Yeah, it's ascending. Yeah, and now, now it's telling us seriously low battery, so it's coming back. And let's see how close it gets. So it's kind of weird. So what I'm going to tell you, tell you when you're judging that battery, uh, judge it on the terms. The, the 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 first half of it lasts a lot longer than the bottom half. That's what I'm going to tell you. And I'm going to say when it goes into that low battery where it restricts your distance, pay attention to that because I'm going to see if I can lower the gimbal. Look at that, I'm actually getting the gimbal lower, and I'm holding the, uh, the uh, remote straight up, so it's looking straight up at the drone. And it's pointed directly away from us. And it's coming down in the grass here. I moved the drone a little bit forward manually there. Okay, let's see if we can stop that beeping. And we can't. That must be low battery beeping. There's probably only one way to stop that beeping, and that is to uh, maybe turn off the drone. Let's try that. Okay, the drone is off. Hey, that stopped the beeping. Okay. So uh, I'll tell you what, I've got another battery. Uh, let me fire this guy back up and we'll try, <laughs> I'm a little nervous, but we'll try some of the intelligent flight modes and, and see what it'll do. And it looks like we're good. We're, we're in sport mode and it's all connected up. That's awesome. We got 18 satellites. Uh, everything's looking good so far. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and fire this guy up. And we're going to do that. Uh, boy, I see they're testing sprinklers here. Hopefully that won't, won't get to where I'm at here. So I am going to uh, hit the unlock button on the controller. There it goes. Yep. It's fired them up. And then uh, let's just do a manual takeoff. I'm going to push up on the left stick. And there we go. That's the easy way to do that. And there again, there's the drone. Let's start recording. Hopefully I can remember to uh, turn that off uh, next time. And uh, let's go up and back. Let me fly the drone out there a ways. 
I'm trying to get a good straight drony. And again, the camera, I didn't point the camera far enough down. Let's try that. There, I got a little better control of the, uh, of the camera this time. Okay, I am going to grab the GoPro and take it with me. And we're gonna walk out there uh, into the field. Accidentally hit the unlock button on the, uh, on the drone. That was a little scary. You sure wouldn't want to, uh, you sure wouldn't want to kill those motors with the drone that high. I was messing with the GoPro and accidentally hit the unlock button on the uh, controller. So I'm bringing the drone down here and we will try and orbit. And I can't remember exactly how this guy does an orbit, but we're gonna find out. You know, when you fly uh, as many of these, uh, some of these, uh, you know, I'm gonna call them, uh, you know, they're right on the cusp of uh, toy grade to hobby grade drones. Uh, some people would call them toy grade. You know, I'm saying it's a little bit more than that. But I'm going to uh, get the drone right above me. And hopefully you guys can see that on the uh, GoPro. And boy, there's a bunch of bumblebees. I don't know if you guys can see it. It's uh, on the GoPro. It's surrounded by bees. They're going nuts trying to attack it up there. That's kind of interesting. Okay. So I'm going to go into the app here and we're going to hit... Uh, orbit flight so let's click on orbit flight and uh, let's see what it does yeah and it just started its orbit and I don't know if you guys can see it but there are bumblebees just following that thing around they're following it around its orbit I'm not I, I, I'm hopefully that is showing uh, on the on the app here but uh, but <laughs> They're just continuing to, uh, to follow it. And it's doing, a, it's doing a really nice orbit here. Doing a nice clean orbit. And uh, yeah, so, so it's gonna start its orbit from wherever you, uh, wherever you have it at. So let's see if we can shut that off. We're gonna go back into that menu. Click on that again. And yeah, it stopped. Okay, so let's bring it down. Let's bring the drone down a little. And boy, I'll tell you what, let's see if we can uh, get up closer to the drone here. And you can see, I don't know if they're wasps or bees or what, but they do not like that drone. Makes me not want to get too close to the drone. Okay. So we're gonna do follow me. I don't know if I wanna do follow me with all those uh, bugs looking at it. Yeah, let's pick that camera up. I, I always push the, the, the wheel the, same, the wrong way. Okay, so let's go back into that menu and this is gonna be a GPS uh, follow me. And uh, I'm a little concerned. I'm gonna grab a little more altitude and uh, then we're going to swipe and yeah let's walk and is the drone following me yeah it is and those bees uh, lost interest so uh, I'm holding the camera up here hopefully it's catching it let me uh, I'm going to drop the gimbal down sorry There we go. That's a little better. And let's walk around here a little bit. And hopefully uh, I'll catch this. So it's doing, a, you know, the GPS follow me is working great. Good job on MJX. Yeah, and it even tells us follow me in the top there. So, you know, when I'm doing this, I'm kind of uh, running the camera and, and the controls at the same time. So let's stop that. And uh, we will, uh, I'm going to put the, uh, 
the drone up in a holding mode up here. Point it back to home. And I'm gonna walk back to my, uh, I'm gonna walk back to my home base and uh, we'll see if we can do a waypoint mission. See if I can fly the drone forward here. And we can point it towards our tree. Boy, that yaw is sensitive towards the tree that we're set up under here. I'm gonna say that part of it was successful. It did a good orbit and it did a good follow me. Hey, I'm walking across here and I just wanna show you guys what that aerator is doing. So we saw that aerator. This is how he's aerating the ground here. Yeah, just thought you'd be interested. Okay, I've got the GoPro uh, set back up here and I'm gonna try a waypoint mission. I'm gonna bring this guy back towards us here. And we've got it up there high enough that it's out of the way. And uh, to, to, to click on that bottom in the bottom uh, 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 right hand side. And I am squeezing, look, we can see where the drone is. I'm squeezing the park down here so we can kind of get an overview of the park. So I'm gonna click on that little button and I'm gonna uh, go point and we're gonna make some waypoints here. And the last one right in front of us. And uh, we are gonna click then, if you look in the bottom of the right, right there again, we're gonna click submit. There we go. I thought I had it there. There it took it, okay. Sorry that, yeah, success. So it should fall, yeah, it's turning around and it's flying to its first waypoint. And we're gonna leave it, uh, I'm watching the drone on screen here. Now this is working great. This is probably the way to fly this drone. Let me uh, see if I can pick up the camera again. I always point it the wrong way, there we go. Okay, so yeah, we got the camera, we got basically the rule of thirds, and I'm seeing in my little picture here, even the, you know, it looks like it's even a fairly decent horizon. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's following this waypoint mission perfectly, and we lost signal there for a second, but, but that's okay. And uh, the waypoint seemed to be accurate as per the map. I'm, like I said, I'm watching the drone. I've got the drone uh, in my sights. And it's executing this waypoint mission perfectly. That's probably how you're gonna get your best, uh, your best video with this guy. And it's moving right along. I mean, it's not messing around. So yeah, we're going, uh, I see it's up to seven meters per second, eight meters per second there. Going to that next waypoint. Yeah, then it slows down to get to the next one. And then it's headed to number five here. This is the last one. Well, shoot, that worked really good. That worked awesome. Okay, so let's, let's try that again. And let's try the other uh, version of it where you track, and I think that's just gonna be me drawing a picture. Yeah. Let's see if it'll do that. Look at that. Okay, that's quite a mission there. Let's hit submit. Yeah, there we go. Swipe. Succeeded. And that is, uh, there's 14 points on that one and it's kind of a a little bit of a spiral, but that's just drawing that picture with your finger. And I mean, the drone is, uh, it's executing it perfectly. And I like the way it kind of sets the different points uh, there on the map. Huh, that's pretty handy. That's pretty cool. And you know, I, I'm seeing that, that we're occasionally losing, depending on which way the drone's facing, we're losing uh, signal with the uh, with the controller, or at least with uh, the uh, FPV for sure. In fact, that's one thing I've noticed is that often, even when we lose contact uh, with FPV, we still have control with the remote control. So the drone still responds to controls. Problem is when you don't have FPV, often you don't know which way the drone's pointing and. 
particularly if it's off in the distance, it's, you know, you can look at the lights on the drone to see which light you can see, but, and like right now, it's, it's showing that it's, uh, you know, we're not out there that far, <laughs> 150 meters, and uh, no signal. So then we got signal back here, and now it's going to take a hard turn, go to waypoint 11. And yeah, once we complete this uh, waypoint mission, we've kind of demonstrated uh, both ways to do that. We'll just hit a return to home and let's just see how close this guy gets to home. I, I'm getting a big kick out of this waypoint. That's kind of one of the best features of this guy that I can see. I mean, it works perfectly. And it's going to go to its last waypoint right now. Boom, and it's just going to stop right there. Okay, let's go back into the uh, full screen here, and let's go ahead and hit return to home. Let's try uh, return to home. I, I think if I hit the bottom one, it would land in place. I think if I hit the top one on the app here, it should return to home, so let's try that. Yeah, confirm, drone will return to its home point, then land on the ground. So, here it comes. And we've got an aircraft fairly low, but he is way above us. I'm going to say he's only five or 600 feet high above us, but uh, way higher than our drone is. And what's interesting about this drone, I wonder, yeah, you can yacht. You can yacht when it's returning to home. That's me yawning around. So that's, that's good to know. Again, let's see how close it gets here to the, uh, to the home point. I just want to make sure it doesn't hit a tree or something. I'm going to yaw the drone around to where it's pointed where I'm standing. And it kind of stopped there for a second, but now it's resumed its descent. It's going to be pretty close here, guys. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to hit the tree we're next to. You should be able to, uh, yeah, you should be able to see that on the GoPro now. And yeah, it's not far off, is it? There we go, right next to the, uh, right next to the pad. Okay, this time I'm going to remember to close out that video file, so I clicked, uh, and it's giving me an error. <laughs> okay, so I don't know what that's about, but let's, let's just very quickly. Before I uh, shut off the drone, we're going to uh, start video again and turn it off. So starting. And one, two, three, turning it off. So I don't know what that error was, but uh, often if you have a file that doesn't close out, if you start another video and shut it off, it'll close out all the files. So I don't know if that worked or not, but I'll find out when I uh, take a look at the SD card. In any case, let's get everything shut down here and we'll do our conclusion. Get you another look. Boy, I'm, I'm telling you, uh, I'll let you guys get a look at the uh, aerator here, but uh, remember what I told you about the bees that were following this guy around? Uh, look at all the uh, pieces of uh, bees all over this drone, and man, on the, on the props especially. Uh, that makes me sad. I don't, I don't like hurting bees, but uh, in any case, let's shut it down, and we're just going to hold the button down, and there we're off. Hey, okay, guys, the uh, MJX Bug 16. Uh, so, uh, I've got really mixed emotions after flying this guy. Uh, I think the video is going to be pretty good. I didn't see any jello on FPV. And the 720p looked good on uh, FPV. And of course, we were shooting in 4K, so it ought to look pretty darn good. Uh, I did see a little bit of a tilted horizon. At this price point, you know, that may or may not be acceptable. Again, 250 bucks. I'll tell you what was unacceptable, though, is the, uh, the video transmission back 
to my iPhone 11 Pro Max uh, was really choppy and uh, it, it, we would lose that transmission uh, not very far away, roughly 100 meters away or a little bit more, sometimes even less. You saw where we lost uh, FPV, it would tell us not connected at the top. And then, you know, then you just can't control the drone. You can't see which way the camera's pointing, et cetera. Uh, control signal seemed to be pretty good. I mean, I felt like I always had the drone in control. And of course, I was pretty near, kept it pretty near in the park here. So it was, it's a big drone, so it was easy enough to see. But I guess what I'm saying is that if it's out there a ways, you know, you're relying on the, uh, the red lights on the front and the green light on the back to know whether it's pointed away from you. When it's that far away, sometimes that can be hard to tell and you just kind of have to experiment around a little to see which way it's coming. Uh, so that's a problem because the reason you buy a camera drone is to get some good shots. And I was trying to, uh, to do some manual orbits like around the tractor and stuff here and I just couldn't do it. I, I could look up at the drone and I could kind of see it and do it. But you have to be able to look at that FPV and see what your camera's looking at, and it, and it just didn't work. So, uh, MJX, that's, that's a disappointment for me. Uh, other than that, it performed well. Now, what, what it did really good was we went out there and we did an orbit with it. And I can't remember what I had that orbit distance set at, whether it was 20 meters or 30 meters, but I think it was 20 meters. It did a perfect orbit just fine. And by the way, wherever you're at when it starts, I couldn't remember. Some drones, you have to center them over the top of you, and then they'll back off. This one just starts in orbit where it's at, so you kind of have to judge how far away it is from you and start that orbit if you want to be in the middle of the orbit. Uh, and then we tried the uh, GPS follow me, and that worked just, just great. Uh, it followed me just fine, so uh, without any drama at all, that was fine. Then the other thing that was really fun uh, was the waypoint missions. We tried both kinds where you just set the points and then where you just draw the points and, and the drone uh, executed them perfectly. I will say while it was on those, those missions, uh, it was going in and out of uh, control and FPV on, on, my drone, on my phone. So again, there's that control issue and that's, uh, that's a problem. But I'm telling you for uh, $250, and if you can find it on sale closer to $200, uh, it's, it's worthwhile because I think it takes pretty good video. And understand this is just my experience with my iPhone. An Android phone might work a little bit differently. You do have to have a 5G Wi-Fi phone, which my iPhone is. So uh, maybe I'll, I've got a, a Google Pixel 3. Maybe one of these days I'll take this guy out and I'll try it with that phone and see if I have a different experience. But uh, so I guess that's about it for the uh, MJX Bug 16 Pro. This is Marcus Crawford with the Idaho Quadcopter Channel out. And if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing to my channel. Most of all, I really do appreciate you taking the time to look at this video. And of course, we will see you on the next one. And uh, yeah, the MJX Bug 16 Pro. And yeah, it does have a few bugs on it right now. All right, see you guys later. Bye.